There's a great deal of interest right now in Canada in small modular reactors, and there are a couple of different designs. One of them is molten salt technology. Now, Professor uh, Ramana, from the, this, who is the Simons Chair in Disarmament, Global and Human Security at the Lew Institute for Global Issues, University of British Columbia, recently wrote a very interesting article in the conversation, and it was titled, Nuclear Power, Why Molten Salt Reactors Are Problematic and Canada investing in them is a waste. So that's a very provocative title. I'm gonna to talk to him about that. Uh, Professor Ramana, uh, welcome to the interview. Thank you so much for inviting me. Look, uh, what's the big problem with molten salt? I, I've interviewed Moltex, which is can one of you know Canada's sort of leading molten salt reactor company. And they have, they give a, a pretty good uh, sales pitch, especially the fact that the uh, their design they say can burn uh, spent can do fuel, which seems pretty cool. But you say there are problems with it, right? Um, so what you heard from them was likely a sales pitch, as you rightly put it. Um, there are multiple problems with it. So there are the to think about the claim that they can burn spent fuel. You have to understand that for there are two that that, that automatically means there are at least two separate components. There is one component that is going to deal with the spent fuel and try to convert it into a form where it can be a fuel for a reactor. Spent fuel by itself just cannot be thrown into a reactor and the reactor operates. The second component is the reactor itself. And so let's first talk about the reactor itself. That's why it's called a molten salt reactor. Um, so in most nuclear reactors, what happens is that the fuel is in the form of some kind of a solid material, uh, a ceramic usually, and is cooled by water. The water is what takes the heat that is produced by the nuclear fission reactions and transfers it to something which we call a steam turbine. That is basically something that converts water into steam, which then goes and uh, pushes a turbine that generates electricity. Okay? In a molten salt reactor, uh, the heat conduction is done by molten salts, uh, and uh, it could also be the case that the uh, fuel itself is also dissolved into these molten salts. Now, Moltex is a slightly different design, but we don't need to go into that. I will talk a little bit more generally about the experience we've had with molten salt reactors. So, so far, there have been two reactors that were constructed of this design, both in the uh, United States, one in the 1950s and one in the 1960s. The one in the 1950s was meant to produce a nuclear fueled airplane. Uh, that ran for a very short period of time and uh, they basically dismantled it uh, soon after that. And then a few years later, basically the US abandoned the whole idea of a nuclear fueled airplane. Uh, the following reactor in the 1960s between 1965 and 1969 was operated in uh, the Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Tennessee. And that particular reactor design is the basis for a lot of molten salt reactor designs. Uh, so I did some historical research trying to see how that reactor actually uh, operated. And we found that it had actually not operated so well at all. It had shut down about 225 times over those four years. Uh, and about three quarters of those shutdowns were uh, not planned for, they were unplanned shutdowns. In other words, it was not to shut down the reactor to make some change in the configuration, change the fuel, et cetera. It was just something went wrong and the reactor shut down, right? And so this is not a basis for building a commercial reactor because you don't want your any power plant to be shutting down this often. Okay. Uh, the second part of the Moltex idea is that you can take the spent fuel and produce fuel with it. But to do that, what you have to do is to actually pull out of the spent fuel the, the materials that can actually be used in the fission reaction, in particular plutonium. Now, plutonium, as most of your uh, listeners would know, uh, is the material that can be used to make nuclear weapons. And the same technology that pulls out plutonium in any form from spent fuel, makes it that much easier to be used in nuclear weapons, right? Uh, Moltex's claim is that it is not going to be pure plutonium, but that doesn't matter because it is like you've done 90% of the work, the rest 10% of the work can be done by anybody anywhere, 
right? Uh, and the second thing to note about this particular process, it's called pyroprocessing that they want to use. It's been tried in the United States. Again, the track record has been abysmal. Uh, so there, it is not managed to uh, deal with all the spent fuel from the EBR reactor. And um, that process has been extremely expensive. So all told, uh, we are thinking about a design which is based on two technologies which have both been unproven and is very unlikely to work. Now, Professor Romana, uh, the, I guess the, the argument from Moltex's side, as I recall it in the interview, is that there's been a lot of work done in the last, you know, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 years since these other projects were undertaken. Some of those technical issues have been uh, resolved, uh, they say. Uh, others are in the process of being resolved. They think they're going to have uh, a working reactor in the late 2020s, uh, at the earliest, maybe early 2030s, uh, OPG, Ontario Power and Generation, uh, thinks the same. Um, but you think that it's unlikely that their, their scientists and engineers will be able to overcome these challenges? Yes, for a couple of reasons. So again, uh, you should think historically. Uh, so in Canada is a little bit of a late entrant to this SMR uh, race, as it were, uh, or at least this SMR hype uh, that we are hearing. Uh, the United States has been at this for a much longer period. So in the early 2000s, under the Bush administration, there was a plan uh, where the Department of Energy looked at a bunch of designs and they said there are several designs which can be commercialized by the end of the decade, which means by 2010. Now, most of those designs that they were talking about are still not commercialized. One particular design which has been moving forward called New Scale is essentially a scaled down version of a light water reactor, which is the most common design. So it's a very well-known design, just making it smaller. And this particular design, uh, when the company was set up, they were expecting to have it work by 2015 to 2016. Uh, now they are talking about 2029 to 2030, right? So that's one thing to remember that, you know, all reactors, uh, uh, designers start by making these tall promises. They're invariably not able to um, materialize. It's not, it's not going to happen. The second thing to remember is that in the case of new scale, again, I re remind people that this is based on a very well-known light water reactor design, unlike Moltex, which is a completely experimental design. The... Uh, company, the, the, there's been totally so far about a billion dollars invested in it, uh, around 330 million from the US Department of Energy, the rest of it coming from private capital. And New Scale expects to spend another 500 to 700 million US dollars on this. So roughly about 1.5 to 2 billion dollars, uh, US dollars. That's not, we don't see that kind of investment coming here uh, for Moltex from any of the uh, governments. The government has given them about $50 million, which is really a drop in the ocean, as it were, because to try and convert something which is at the very experimental stage, you know, theoretical work has been done into a design that can actually be constructed, takes a lot of money because any good regulator will ask a lot of hard questions. How will this reactor behave under, under an earthquake? How will it behave under a fire? To answer all of that, you have to do a lot of experiments. You have to show, uh, employ a lot of engineers and scientists to show that it actually will work. And that's an expensive process. Well, final question, uh, Professor uh, Ramana. The, there's a, an economist named Jason Dion who did a study on pathways to decarbonize Canadian uh, Canadian economy. And he talked about uh, safe bets, which are, you know, renewables, electric vehicles, those are already commercial and just need to scale up. And then he talked about uh, uh, wild cards. And mm -hmm. that, those are technologies that still show promise, but, you know, aren't a, are nowhere near a safe bet. They need a lot of uh, work and investment yet to develop them. Maybe they'll be commercial in the 2030s or 2040s. He lists SMRs amongst the, the wild cards. And the argument there is that, it, that these show promise and we should continue to invest in them uh, to see if they'll work. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, but we should continue investing. Would you agree, agree that SMRs are a legitimate wild card and that we should continue development? No. Um, and the simple reason is that we know a lot about these. Uh, if you take away the hype that the SMR vendors are sort of offering and you look 
hard at the facts, at the technical challenges, at the economic challenges, which are immense. Um, uh, I talked about the investment part of it, but also remember that when you go small, you are losing out on what are called economies of scale. Uh, all reactors started off small in, in most countries and they became larger and larger because they were trying to gain on economies of scale. When you build a small reactor, you're going ahead against it. And nuclear power already, even with large reactors, is not economical, right? So that challenges people are not talking about. And lastly, the historical experience has shown us that many of these designs look great on paper, uh, but when they actually are trying to construct, they just don't perform so well. So I am not. I don't think of this as a as a, even a wild card bet. I think we have done the experiment. We should learn from that experiment and move on. Well, that's a, a very interesting perspective. You're going against the grain, and it's good to hear a contrarian point of view on this. So thank you very much for your insights. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that.